Welcome to the DL Gaming Podcast. I'm Bobby. I'm Nick. I'm Amanda. I'm cold. I'm like wearing a sweater and shit. Not a, this is very rare for me. Bobby, what is even it, Bobby's wearing a sweater. Over there? Yeah, well, a hoodie. Yeah, looks like you got that from the zoo. I did. Yeah. I got no shirt underneath though. <laughs> so that uh, I have, uh, I have discovered in in my marriage that wearing a sweater without a shirt is a thing. Yeah, of course. Cause yeah, you, I never knew that. You, you, it's not cold enough that you need both layers, but it's not warm enough that you can get away with. Well, I don't know. I'm, yeah, what, what, what do you mean by a thing? Like it's like an invitation for sex? Like what? No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> no what I'm saying is like Calm growing down, up. Christian. Anytime I wore, a, I wore a sweater, I had a shirt on underneath it. Every oh, time. That is- that is true, too, because I also remember a lot of times growing up, man, we would put, like, tank tops and shirts under a lot of layers. A lot of layers in the 90s. <laughs> That's what everybody wore. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. I, these days, like, yeah, dude, you got to sometimes go no shirt under the sweater. Yeah. I, I, it's nice. What's yeah, the relation I, to the marriage, that. though? Like, it's... what's it have to do with your marriage? Because, Leslie, okay, so there's a comedian named Christina Pajitsky and she calls these things the Pajitsky effect. And it's where you discover something because of your ethnic ass parents have taught you so many things that you don't realize there's, that there's other ways of doing things. And so growing up, I always wore an undershirt, a Costco oh. white fucking shirt that was thicker than like Fort Knox, dude. And so I would always be sweating and everything, <laughs> everything I wore, I was just sweaty. And, my my wife's like, why the fuck are you putting on a shirt underneath your sweater, you idiot? And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, you and your you, your brother and your dad were all like wife beater uh, wearers for like as long as for I a long remember. time, yeah, yeah. Until you realize it kind of looks like a bra when it's too small. <laughs> I think you got too big, dude. All right, how about some <laughs> PC games, guys? Yeah, let's get to oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's that kind of show. It's not a general podcast. <laughs> oh, it's nice. We got the whole gang back together here this week. First mm-hmm. time this year. So Heck that's yeah. a thing. Uh, but let's kick it off with On the Radar, games that have come to our attention. I'll start it off with Warlander. This is an interesting medieval MOBA. Lots of different genres mixed up here. Um, I... I always get very suspicious when they overpromise on like the genre mixing, but this, I, I don't know, th- this could turn out to be good. Um, so it's, it's a MOBA game, but it's also like a third person. So similar to Smite, Aragon or Paragon, which doesn't exist anymore. Super um, Combat, which does not exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but it also mixes in some 4X strategy, uh, it's 2v2, or it can be 5v5. You can have up to 100 players. You're sieging castles, and you have to destroy the, the core. Um, so I'm hesitant to call it a MOBA, similar to like the third-person MOBAs. It looks like there's actually a lot more going on than that. I, I always like the medieval setting. Uh, I, I like the castle sieging and stuff like that. So this could be cool. It's just it's tough when you make a game that requires a large player base. So yep. hopefully it does well and enough people play it. It's not coming out until later this month. Well, actually, no, January twenty fourth. We are we are at the end of this month. I didn't realize that. Um, In two days. Yeah, it's coming out January twenty fourth. We don't have a price on it yet. Um, Who are these people that are making this, Chris? Because this is very lofty. I'm guessing a company. Toy launch. Oh what else have they made? Oh, near the near near. No, replica? they didn't actually make the near oh. games. I think they made the the offshoot game for it. Was that good? Was it well received? I have no clue to be honest. I don't know. It says right there, near replicant uh, version one point, and then there's like seventeen no. numbers. Yeah, they made the real near. These yeah. guys are legit. Interesting. Oh. Wow. Okay. Near Tomata. Uh, yeah. Near replicant. Well, they made the sequel, I guess. Oh, the sequel. Version yeah. 1. But 9 out of 10. 4, 7, 4, 4, 8, 7, yeah. 1, 3, 9. <laughs> and that's all it shows. But there's more to that number. I'm telling you, he can read a list off like a motherfucker, dude. I can read numbers. Dude, those it's, were numbers. <laughs> it's my superpower. Those were numbers. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, looks interesting. I really like the siege. Uh, the ladders going up the side. And one guy was holding like a shield above them so the rocks wouldn't hit them. And the other people were following the big guy. That seems cool. I, I don't know, like. 
How many of these people are players? How many of them are NPCs? Um, yeah, well, NPCs. it's a MOBA, so I imagine you have like minions that go down lanes, mm -hmm. and you. Uh, it looks like there's ways that you can buff them, or you can spawn additional units. But then your character, you upgrade and, and customize that character with special abilities. So, yeah, that could be cool. Yeah, the more Warlander. Hmm. If I if I have to go with a Nicholas prediction for this game. I think what we're going to see is we're going to see an iffy start. Okay. We're going to see a buggy start. But what's going to happen is in about three or four months, some hard hitting patches are going to get through. And then you're going to see some streamers on Twitch get paid to do a fucking promotional for it. And this is going to blow up a smidge. We're going to see like a max of 200 to 300,000 players. It's also cross platform and they made the near mm. game. So I'm wondering if it's coming out on play. Yeah. PlayStation it 5. Is. Xbox Series S and X. So maybe plenty of players for this one. I'm like, this is getting me hyped. I want to play it. <laughs> That's all they needed. What do you think the odds are of this being free to play? Oh, this already came out for PlayStation. September 2022. Oh, yeah. I guess it is already out for PlayStation. What's the price tag on the PlayStation version? Oh, it's free to play. It is a free to play okay. game. Wow. Right. Chances well, are 100. I'm playing that. All right. Can, <laughs> we, can, can, we get the, uh, can we get the Metacritic on the Sony version of it, please? Before everybody get excited, let me temper down, temper everybody down. Bring some realistic expectations here. Fifty nine percent, guys. Fifty nine percent with nine. Yeah. Is that critics? Is PlayStation or Five. That's PlayStation players. Four. Yeah, just type in Warlander. Okay. Nice dead air here. No, nah, yeah. There's <laughs> nothing. Uh, yeah. There's. It's to be determined. <laughs> They're waiting for the PC version okay. to get the full. Yeah, they the may, full review. there may be other games called Warlander too. So, not a very unique name. <laughs> you guys will not give up <laughs> on this. It's going to be shit, guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we'll, well see. see. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, uh, no, it, it coming from the near people. I mean that that gives it some promise for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We won't know until we know. We got to wait two days. <laughs> it, it, this it, it'll take that long for him to find this review for us anyway. <laughs> That's true. Uh, all so right. What's up? What's up with Dead Space? You just talking about the remake? Yeah, I'm just bringing it up because it's coming out like super soon, like uh, mm -hmm. like I don't know, five days from now, something like that. Um, yeah. Everybody knows what it is. I'm not gonna go over it. Uh, where is everybody at? Because I'm fig I'm figuring sixty bucks. That, it's and, seventy bucks. Seventy bucks. Is anybody mm -hmm. in for 70 bucks? No. No. Yeah, I didn't think so. As a lifelong, like, very, very big Dead Space fan, no. I'm going to wait until this is on sale inevitably in, like, six or seven months or during Christmas for, like, 40 schmeckles and then just buy it then. Yeah, I agree. Um, the they, backlog is way too long to be buying things day one. Yeah. Apparently, they, they added a bunch of stuff uh, to the game, but not, like, you know, life changing in the sense of like it changes the whole narrative or anything. Um and so that's all stuff that I can wait for. It's not like they came out like one point five where there's like another half of a game after it or something that I have to play. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's and yeah. uh, along that same vein, I, and I'm sure I'm gonna get the same answer. Dead Island two I found out today is the epic exclusive. And probably is it? Oh, yeah, because I couldn't find it on Steam, and then I, I Googled it, and yeah, the only place you can find it is on Epic, and it's a $60 game. I'm also guessing that it's not... When does saying. it come out? Um, like the second of next month. Fuck, I'm going to have to play that. I think I think I actually might play full price for that. I, I think it's going to be a good game for me and Leslie to play together. Excuse me, that was like a burp. Um, but I also think that a, like a couple of my friends, they really, really love Dead, I mean, uh, Dead Island 1, so... Yeah, so did yeah. Bobby. Yeah, I, I still don't know if I'm going to buy it day one. I imagine it's one of these things where it's going to be exclusive to Epic for a period of time, but eventually will come out on Steam. Yeah. Uh, you kind of owe Epic a little bit, I would say. I mean, maybe one one purchase. Uh, but what if it's like a a 98, Bobby, on Metacritic? You think you pull the trigger after the first week? I don't know. I've passed on better games. You have. <laughs> it's true. You, uh, I, I do like Dead Island, and I, I like where they went with what, what were the other games that they made? Techland, um, uh, Di not Dying Light. We messed Dying this Light. up. No, we messed this up last time. They made. What else did they make? Or Deep Silver. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
No, I think that's right. They they started making because those are practically the same games, but they've got kind of a different tone to them. And and uh, no, we made this mistake before, dude. They did not make the Dying Light games. They made um, something else. I can't really? think of it. Yeah, because they're very similar. The whole crafting system yeah. is the same. Tech uh, Techland made the Dying Tech Light Land games. Made okay, Dying Light. This is Deep Silver. Hmm. Yeah, Dead Island. The guys from Dead Island made Homefront. That's interesting. Um, I I don't remember home front. It's a um, like it's, it's a game that got changed during development due to like actual geopolitical like relations. So originally the game was supposed to be that China begins to take over the world. Um, well, the U.S. right? Yeah, and then so <laughs> for the the first time, I mean. They they took over most of Asia and like into the Middle East with and but in the actual game it's it's um North Korea. Uh but it ends up happening is yeah, they whatever enemy country spreads to the Middle East and they take over all the Pacific to include Australia and New Zealand. Um but it's the first time that the American soil is ever attacked, uh or the, the continental United States is ever attacked, and it's like a kind of like a game that was exploring the ideas of what would happen when that when that would happen like would there be a, re- a rebellion would there be like a you know saboteurs and stuff that was kind of like in europe during world war ii and you played a, a veteran who you know does b- become part of this resistance it's, it's essentially a red dawn the game yeah um if something like that sounds good to you there's a show called um Man in the High Castle. Very, yeah, but the Nazis winning. Yeah, the Nazis winning, and well, the Nazis and the Japanese, and they yeah. split America in two, uh, the West and East Coast. It's a very good mm. show. I might have to check that out. I've heard a lot of it's good things about channel. it. I know a bunch of bunch of Emmys too. Yeah, the uh, production value. You're like, wow, how how do they do this, man? It looks very good. Speak. <laughs> um. So yeah, nobody on Dead Island two probably right. Well, Nick not maybe. not maybe day one. Maybe, but it's probably like a 30% chance that that's going to happen. Gotcha. I doubt it. Okay, what do you got on the, uh, here? Um, I mean, I got Chicory, A Colorful Tale. Uh, this is definitely a game that you would not be expecting me to be talking about. We talked to you before, uh, about it before on the podcast. It was released in June of 2021. Um, it's a fun little like puzzle-ish adventure game um, where you are a little doggy and you have a little paintbrush. And you just kind of paint the world and apply mechanics using paint and other, and other like just a paintbrush and a bunch of other like tools. Um, you solve puzzles, you interact with enemies, or you interact with other NPCs and stuff. Um, you, it just looks like a really interesting game. And you're like Nicholas, that's not your kind of game. You like the shooty games or the scary games. Why? Um, it's because I have a two year old daughter now. Um, I mean, I've had her. It's two and a half almost. Um, and this is something that's going to like grab her attention. She actually just finished Stray with my wife. Oh, cool. Uh, so my, my wife was playing Stray and our daughter would watch. And she she would every time she would go in her room, she would grab the PlayStation remote and like look at my wife and be like, kitty game? Kitty game? Kitty game? <laughs> and my wife would play Stray with her. Uh, before I forget, uh, I, don't, I want to talk about it. Uh, the Last of Us. Uh, did we all watch it? And what did we I all did, think yeah. about it? I did. Uh, it was great, right? There's another episode today. I'm probably going to watch it right after this. Did yeah, I'm gonna. We're, me and Leslie are probably going to watch it immediately. Um, I would. W- so, who played the game? Just me, right? I yes. I I watched the game be played. You watched the game, yeah. right? Yeah. So they added some stuff and they changed some stuff. But if you want to talk about how to add and change shit to establish lore and material, this is how you fucking do it. The changes that they did make, the the things that they did add, fucking perfect. The actual scenes from the video games are shot for shot remakes. Um, you can see the comparisons where... There's a scene where Ellie and Joel get into a room and Joel's sitting on the couch, like laying, just be, immediately begins to lay down. And she's like, what are you doing? And he's like, relaxing, passing time. And she's like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? And he goes, you'll figure it out. Um, and 
that like literally from the video game to the show it was a per- pretty much a 95 percent perfect like um performance of the, of that scene i think and, uh, out of the park yeah it's a great show i i think this is in the running for probably best video game show but it's only been one episode <laughs> it was but great we'll see. though it was great i mean i wow. I never played any of the any of the games, so to me, I kind of went in totally blind. But I do know quite a lot about fungus and fungi and infections and stuff. So for me, it was like really awesome to watch this. And Cordyceps was like a great fungus for them to pick as like a terrifying thing. Is that's how it is in Last of Us video game as well? Because like I said, I've I've never even played the game. I don't I don't think you actually could, dude. Because there's some really scary parts. You'd probably be like, oh, I totally bitch out. Well, it's yeah. yeah. The the remake's coming out pretty soon days uh for on steam uh right so yeah it's, i saw it today it's not that i mean scary. It's i'm not like... still a scaredy cat so <laughs> that doesn't that's not gonna change on steam <laughs> i don't know that'd be cool though to check it out i think and how it would be different than watching the uh well like watching the show and then playing the game you know what i mean instead of playing the game and then watching the show yeah, yeah. i need yeah, to I... I need to watch this show because a lot of the set pieces were in downtown Calgary and Edmonton. And I got to like walk, walk past some of them um, and see where they were filming and where they had all these like broken apocalyptic cars set up and it looks so cool. And in local media and news, everyone's like, Oh my God, we're like the place where the last of us Netflix show was filmed. We're fucking famous now. So I hope they're not. Well, also too, Pedro Pascal did uh, an interview talking about how much he absolutely adores Calgary, Canada, and like how much he loves Edmonton and he loves being in Canada. Uh, I I wouldn't be too proud of them picking your place to be the apocalyptic, <laughs> the apocalypse. <It's laughs> yeah. Like, uh, some some person went and scouted it out and be like, yeah, we barely have to touch this thing to make it look like the fucking look apocalypse. So. There's bullet holes yeah, everywhere already. Detroit. There's fungus everywhere. That. Yeah. They, it smells like shit yeah, already. They Perfect. drove through Detroit to get to Calgary and chose yeah. Calgary, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, <what? laughs> so just um, put, put that uh, put on the that on the socials and see what hey, you think. We'll take what we can get, you know. Yeah. Um, another another little fun fact that I that I thought was really cool was that the people playing the uh, clickers in the show, both voice and both mocap, are the same. Oh, cool. Well, they. Hmm. I mean, I guess they could have took the. Well, no, they couldn't have. I was thinking maybe they could could have taken the data from the game, but. You need them doing different things. Anyway, sorry. To well, the other thing is that some of them are actually like, uh, what is it called? Um, practical effects. Oh, and so, okay. yeah. I just wanted to make sure we got that in there because it was a very big video game thingy. Uh, Amanda, you oh, got a bunch sure. of stuff. It looks like maybe. No, she just yeah. has two. Oh. I got, yeah. I was going to say, like, speaking of another cruel world <laughs> flipping through, uh, I put on the radar for Spoken. Uh, this is a RPG, but it seems to be pretty focused on parkour and fighting. And the mechanics of the fighting do kind of remind me of uh, Elden Ring in a sense, but it's not like Elden Ring. It's definitely a lot more of running around and looking at beautiful cinematic things. It is incredibly impressive. It's this woman from New York City who, um, I don't know how she gets to this world, but she ends up in this, like, they call it this breathtaking land called Athea. Or, yeah, Athea. And uh, essentially she's wearing this, like, magical bracelet that gives her, like, magical powers. And it's she's running around and um, trying to find her way back home to New York City in, like, the real world. Um, so it's a lot of parkour and, like, running and, like I said, like, avoiding things and it just looks like it's going to be a lot of fun i don't know i've always enjoyed uh some of the games like this this kind of reminds me of um was it phoenix i think was the game but square enix also made that one i'm trying to think of which oh uh, uh, mirror's game. edge so, i mean yeah well mirror's edge is sick yeah like that one was, was a really old one which is great um I enjoyed that, and I think that there's definitely a lot of mechanics in this game that was like that one, you know, especially with the parkour and stuff. But this is in like a magical fantasy setting uh, with what seems to be like a badass bitch from New York City, so I'm down. Yeah, the visuals are fucking awesome. The graphics are awesome. Uh, I saw a a review of the not a review, but a preview of this. I guess there was a demo, and people played the demo, and they still weren't sure what it was. 
but it's definitely action packed and it says it, it, the guy says uh uh they really like particle physics so they just said here's all of them at once it's just like <laughs> boom all crazy in your face so yeah it looks looks cool i i'm definitely intrigued this uh like this trailer kind of blew up intrigued. This this trailer kind of blew up in like a niche sense for people who make game trailers. It kind of, it sparked a discussion of, uh, and uh, what's your guys' opinion when you see quotes in trailers? Do you think, oh, this must be an excellent game, or do you think, oh, they're padding this trailer with quotes because the game is shit? Well, I don't like. I these just think quotes. it's bad. <laughs> Not a fan of these ones. RPG fan says mm-hmm. fun. <laughs> okay, that's super helpful. Enduring, yeah. beautiful. Like these are just fucking adjectives, dude. These I, are not. <laughs> I don't read yeah. any. I don't read any. Like it, they might as well be like uh, explosions or something. Like uh, it doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, they have very little effect. I, I don't. I don't even read them. I'm looking at the. I'm more interested so, in the colors in the background. After learning like what the ruling is on what you can like get from quotes and put them in advertising material for games and and movies. It could be like someone could literally say it wasn't a very beautiful game and they could literally just put beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, what sparked this discussion because someone went by one by one to these quotes and it was very like uh, this game has the potential to be a, a beautiful experience or uh, the main character was very endearing in this specific scene. But then they're like applying it to kind of the whole game. Anyways, right. it was a niche discussion that blew up. Everyone had different takes on it but i'm wondering like for the common person do they even give a shit like for me before this when i saw quotes i i don't think they swayed me one way or the other they kind of yeah. maybe just I'm neutral yeah, maybe i just assume they're all made up <laughs> yeah. yep i'm the same i, I think that they i just feel like they pull them out of their ass half the time so i don't i don't There's really like care a whole but section in uh, uh this uh movie critic mark kermode british critic there's in one of his books there's like this whole section about all the times he's been misquoted to promote movies. Mm. And it's exactly what Christian was describing. They cherry pick just certain phrases or words to make it sound better than what you were really saying. Uh, Last. Chris, the one, when they looked up the one that said fun, was it immediately uh, right after not? <laughs> That'd be so funny. No, no, the, the great thing was the one that just says fun was actually kind of the close, like Closest the one. reviewer wrote at the end of the review, like yeah. this game is fun, like pretty much word for word. <laughs> That's like the only one. Oh, so. well. <laughs> nice. nice. But I mean, we'll see soon enough if this game's actually going to be fun or if it was just made out of bullshit of uh, words and fluffy things because it's coming out on the f- 24th of January, which is going to be when this episode releases. So when you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Play or wherever you're listening to us, which you can go to our dlgaming.net if you want to find any of those links and go to discord but you know when you hear it that's when this is going to be out right. and it's 70 dollars, which is Whoa. probably Ooh. too damn much Whoa. <laughs> that should have we'll been a see. box quote expensive <laughs> <laughs> yeah should have led with that very expensive and they cherry pick uh, their adjectives right. so we'll see I, okay guys i say we keep the expensive but we get rid of the very what do you guys think <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just expensive. That's how we we're gonna describe this one. <laughs> they don't know if it's if it's expensive Things for them that... or it costs us a lot to produce. They don't know. It could go either way. Nobody knows. It's probably too damn much. But something that uh, I don't know in my experience has always been pretty damn cheap is uh, power cords. What's up with that, Bobby? Power cord. Well, this is a power cord in wow, a musical wow. sense. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. And this game. So a couple of months ago, I you think brought this was. up before, right? No, different oh. game. Uh, so the game I brought up a couple of months ago was Battle Bands, mm-hmm. a, a subtitle, a deck building game. I think it, the subtitle was something as generic as that, but that was really cool because it was the first time I had uh, seen a roguelike that was co-op. Um, we we've seen it a few more times since then, but this was long enough ago that uh, it was new and novel. And that game came out in March, Battle Bands. And the reviews were good, but there weren't very many of them. Um, So I don't know. I I still maybe one day will check that out. Uh, But this game, Power Chord, is yet another uh, roguelike deck building game where you play musicians 
fighting with the power of your music, except this time you're fighting against demons. It's not like a battle of the bands type thing. Um, and it's got more of like a grungy, in-your-face uh, art style to it, um, rather than the friendly cartoonish one of battle bands. Um, mm-hmm. This one, though, Power Chord, is not co-op, but it looks like, just from the screenshots and the gameplay trailers, it looks like it's a little more complicated, or at least that's what the graphic style is telling me. Uh, like, there's a little more depth to the to the gameplay. Uh, it's coming out very soon, I think just uh, in a couple of days or a week here. Yeah, January 26th. And uh, do we have a price tag? No, we don't. No price tag on this yet. Looks great visually. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the look of it. It seems like the background doesn't change very much, or maybe, you know, they just got it from early Maybe they're production. showing level one only. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that as well. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, next game that I have is called Golfie. It's almost like somebody listened to this podcast and was like, how can I get a game for Bobby and Emilio to play? This is a deck building, <laughs> uh, ge- uh, procedurally generated mini golf game. Um, so I, I watched the whole video and I wa- watched a few other things and I could not see the, how you launch the ball. Like it, I, it doesn't seem that you have a stick or anything. I think you are the ball and you kind of launch yourself. That's my guess. But when you, um, select, I even saw people streaming. I was like, I, I don't know how this works, but every time you, uh, are about to shoot, you have like three cards that you could get to pull from. So you could have like a floaty ball or, or a curve ball or whatever. And, um, oh, I guess that's how you do it. Maybe the card is how you shoot, and then you only get a direction from there. That's what it seems like it is. Um, anyway, so it looks fun. I really like the procedurally generated part because the worst thing about mini, game, uh, mini golf games is that you play the, the map a few times and then you get good at it or you start to remember. But if it's complete, it's making up new ones all the time, that sounds awesome to me. I mean, I'm sure you'll get some stinkers in there, but overall, it um, seems like fun to me. All right. Put that in your trailer. Looks like fun. It's <laughs> 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 fun. Uh, I think it's on sale right now for 12 bucks. I didn't pick it up because I want some other people to commit. Bobby, you in? No. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's going to be a no for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> what is Pioneer's Surviving Desolation? Yes. Yeah, Other so than a Pioneer. long name. Yeah, <laughs> way too long of a name. But the Pioneers, Surviving Desolation. That's how gong, I kind of read gong. it. Is, it was released on January 20th, so just came out. So far, uh, 71% mostly positive. Not too many reviews, though. There's 77 of them out there. This is a survival management top-down kind of strategy-based building game uh, where you and two other people... So they have like 15 characters and you start with three of them that are randomly generated in this uh, moon off of Jupiter. And the whole point is to survive, to try and build up like, um, you know, a home base kind of station and then thrive. Um, And so it's just kind of how long you can survive and it's a space simulation. Mm -hmm. And so... So it looks pretty fun so far. It seems like a lot of the negative reviews for it are that it are that it, there isn't a auto save or a quick save function, which is really unfortunate. That's, um, that's a huge issue. Yeah, that's, for sure. that's a weird one. So, but a lot of people are saying that like you know come back in a few weeks. Like this is a very easy yes, get this game once the kinks are worked out of it, basically. But they are having a sale going on right now since it is early and uh, early access where it is twenty five. $25. Well, we'll round it up to 26 because why not? It's $25.49. No, Christian, it looks interesting. What do you think? Um, I think this Chris up Christian's uh, alley. It looks like a multiplayer surviving Mars, no? Well, this looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> similar, <laughs> but it is It is very important to say it is not multiplayer. It is a single player oh, game. Oh, sorry. I could have sworn you said co-op. I guess I'm crazy. If I said co-op, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I, more like, <laughs> more likely, I'm crazy. 
It's a single, yeah, it's single player, like I said, RTS kind of, well, they, yeah, they tag it as RTS and exploring, like I said, this moon on Jupiter with your people. And it's because, well, you probably thought multiplayer because, yeah, you start off with three characters oh, out of 15. And But I think it's kind of cool that they're randomized. They're completely random. So that's an interesting replayability because each character has, like, pros and cons and skills and different things that they bring to um, the headquarters. So... Yeah, I've got my eye on this game. This looks really fascinating. Nice, mm. nice. All right. Yeah, it looks pretty interesting. Well, that wraps up on the radar. Let's talk about some games that we have been playing this last week. And I'll kick it off with Marvel Snap. I finally checked it out after it came out on Steam. Uh, Steam. Couldn't really get into it. I started playing it, and I saw how it was kind of guiding me into it, like slowly giving me more and more cards, which expanded the gameplay, but it didn't really hook me. It just kind of felt a little simplistic. And I understand that's the appeal. These are very short games. And I imagine the gameplay gets a little more complex as you go along. But it's, you know, it's a card game where you have three lanes of combat, and in each lane you can put uh, maximum four characters. And you have one energy to spend on the first turn two on the second turn three on the third turn and so on up until six so you're kind of limited on what you can play um i don't know like i i i played it for an hour or two and i just it, it didn't hook me like i i thought it would but you know it's not a it's not a terrible game and i can and it doesn't really bully you into buying stuff but it it kind of does if for the um battle pass well, there's the battle pass, but then you can also buy cards, you can buy cosmetics, you can buy lots of stuff, and it's on the, the whole timer cooldown thing. So uh, like the limited so availability much. thing? Yeah, well, you can only get so much, and then there's a cooldown timer. You've got to wait two hours for this to become available again, and then you can uh, earn more. So. Well, you can't buy cards. You can buy variants of cards, but you can't buy just straight up buy cards. Really, I could have sworn there was like this pack you could buy with. Uh, uh, yeah, you, it would come with the. Oh, I guess if you buy a pack, yeah, sometimes you can get one card or maybe two. Uh, but hmm. generally, once you start playing, you already have those cards, and they're just variant colors. And you want variants because it's easier to level up. Leveling up your cards is how you get your um, account level to go up. Your, your sorry. I always forget it. Your um, collection level to go up. So you make your cards prettier, and then your collection level goes up, and then you unlock chests and whatever it can be. But you cannot just buy chests, and you can't just buy cards. You kind of have to play and earn that stuff. So you can't sure. even with even if you were to dump a ton of money into this, uh, there's no guarantees you're gonna, you're going to have a few more cards, but you're not going to have everything you want. For sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's all random. I mean, it's all right. I just wasn't, I, I didn't get super into it. I, I imagine a big part of the appeal of this is it being on the phone as well. Yeah. And the, the games are so short that it's really easy to just knock one out really quick. But as far as, it, it kind of felt weird just sitting at my computer playing this. It did not feel like a, like a PC game. Uh, you know, we have an expectation of PC games. We talked about this when we were talking about CRPGs. Like, What's a CRPG compared to a regular RPG? And I mean, you, you can talk about like the isometric angle and like, uh, but really, I think it comes down to like it's just more complex with its inventory or its uh, uh, the mechanics of its fighting system. Uh, so I think like when you're sitting at a computer playing games, it's like no, I want to play something complicated like a grand strategy or uh, something with lots of buttons. <laughs> and if and if not complicated than visually you know stunning or the, yeah yeah like well i mean something. this game looked good it, it looked does fun. look good um but yeah i i, I only i play it mobily you know mm -hmm. when i have an extra four minutes or sometimes when i don't even have four minutes like it's so addicting but yeah the complexity keeps ramping up and ramping up like the first time i saw a card that said um destroy your other cards here at this location i'm like what kind of bullshit was that? Like, why would I ever play that card? And then, of course, there's destruction decks, there's discard decks, all kinds of shit. And right now, I'm like, oh man, uh, you, there's not compared to Magic. There's like a minute, one fraction of one percent of the cards, 
and uh, somehow you still kind of come up with your own thing, and uh, it's fun, you know, especially mm-hmm. when it starts working. Yeah, I imagine I just need to get to that stage where the gameplay gets a little more complicated. But even, you know, I spend money, uh, Chad spends money, and again, uh, this continues. We keep talking about, he's like, this is my deck right now. I got one uh, character, I got Wong, and Wong is like a, a very, certain certain cards uh, open up entire deck types. Like you can totally just play Wong deck, yeah, and there's not very many uh, decks like that. So anyway, I got him, and I was like, hey, um, send me your Wong deck so I can copy it so I have a baseline to, to go off. And he sends it to me, I'm like, I'm literally missing five of those cards, I can't. There's no way I can do any of those. Mm-hmm. And same thing mm-hmm. happened last week. I sent him my Thor deck, and he's like, yeah, dude, I don't have any of those. And we play a lot. We play every single day. I think it's I think it's a strong point of the game that not everybody has the same cards. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I've already gushed about this game enough. <laughs> uh, another game that we all played was Legion TD2. Uh, we played, yes. I played with Nick, and I played with Bobby, but I did not play with Nick and Bobby. Uh, the common denominator was uh, JP Diddy. It's um, it's a lot simpler than I thought it was, uh, but I'm sure there's depth that I'm completely ignoring, like uh, the paper, scissors, rock aspect of the units themselves. Like, I haven't learned that yet. I'm just yeah. trying to really dial in my one army. There, there's a lot to this game. There's a lot that I don't understand, even though I've been playing quite a bit of it this week. I've really enjoyed it. I think it's a great game, and it's... Um, I, I dipped into the multiplayer as well, the versus mode, which is 4v4. And uh, it's pretty challenging. I mean, I'm seeing it, it, but it's helpful because when you dive into the multiplayer, you see people who do really well. You see how they're building, what, you know, how they're handling their, their workers and what units they're building and when they're sending units. And it, it kind of helps guide you to be a better player. Uh, so I thought, I thought that was a good experience, even though I kept losing. But I think there's a lot to this game than meets the eye. Um, you talked about it last week and just the general description of it is uh, units, it's a wave survival tower defense where you have a lane, you stack units to defend and the computer sends waves but your opponents can also additionally send units and they call that sending. Um, and then you try to survive, you make gold by killing units and then you spend that gold on workers and more units uh, and your workers generate mythium which is what you can use to send units at your enemies and then those generate gold so it's kind of like this cycle Um, they do have an amazing tutorial that's like four minutes and 15 seconds and they just run through this in a super easy to understand way i was so impressed by this tutorial like in four minutes i was just like all right i know how to play this game i haven't mastered it like i'm very far from that like i've got a lot more to learn about what units counter other units and things like that and also where to place the units which seems to have a very big effect on on the outcome um but i was off to a really good start after just four minutes and it's just refreshing to see that in a world where you try to look up a tutorial for the game and it's like 37 minutes long and it's like, Jesus Christ, dude, like I'll just figure it out myself. (laughs) (laughs) But um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a good time with this game. The multiplayer, I was worried about this. So it's 4v4, which means eight people. That means you got to get eight people who aren't going to like leave early or disconnect or have an issue. Um, And it took me two times just to get into a game where that didn't happen. But when it finally did, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was way more fun than the solo uh, campaign. Um, And I was learning so much. But I feel bad because I'm letting my teammates down. I do not understand when I should be sending units and or what units I should be sending. And each, each unit has like a different attack type, you know, like piercing or magic or nature. And that counters another type and it's weak against another type it's like a what's that in pokemon where they have like uh the element types it's like a i don't know somebody there's a name for it where it's like a circular uh they have this in card games as well it's like a circular diagram that you can draw where this counters that but that counters like a venn diagram and then that that thing right there counters this there uh, well that's the that's not what i'm talking about i know exactly what you're talking about bobby but i don't know what 
It's, like it's like A counters B, B counters C, and C counters A. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, there, there's like a name for that. Um, but anyway, I'm having a good time with this game. It's, uh, it, it is a little, I, I'd say it's kind of tough to get into. Like, it's a, I, I could see how this could be a hard sale for people. And the games go pretty long. Like, yeah. you, you're in for a time commitment here. If but the, if the teams short. are matched, uh, if they're equally matched, it's going to go on and on. Because yeah. it's a very small degree that where it's going to make that. If one team is 1% better than the other, you're going to be sitting there a good 30 minutes, probably. Yeah, I'd say it's around there. I would say the only thing you didn't bring up is um, the creeps. Uh, they go automatically. And then you're just adding, when you send, you're only adding to the creeps that are going to go over there anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could, if you knew the creeps that are, are you, if you're familiar with the creeps that are leaving, you would pick the best ones that accompany them the best. So like mm-hmm. maybe there's like some bruisers that are going to go over there. You would throw some healers on that pack. Yeah, well, not only that, you could peek into your opponent's lane and see what units they're building and then counter those ones. That's another layer. I guess guess it's easy to learn and difficult to master. Yeah, there's just a lot. And you don't have too much time in between the rounds to set everything up. You really don't. I think they give you, like, what, 30 seconds, which seems like a lot. But, like, based on everything you got to do to figure out, it's (laughs) I'm constantly running out of time. Constantly, we're like, oh, I ran out of time. And then, you know, you're your army is not up to snuff and you find out real quick and then you let your team that's the worst part about it i mean it's pseudo it's multiplayer but it's just you know you guys aren't interacting very much other than just kind of like covering each other when one fails yeah. well you can and, ping like when you're going to send so they can send as well and you can also see what your what your teammates are sending that round and kind of complement that although you're sending to different lanes yeah you don't uh, know to- where they're going to go I right. had to uninstall this game because huh. I played. I returned I, it. I played like thirty ranked games, and I was like, during a week where I had like work and shit, I was playing at not when I was supposed to be playing, and I was getting really into it. I was watching like hour long YouTube videos. I was like, yes, positioning. Okay, understand. Understood. <laughs> I like. I I went from like bronze four to to silver two uh, in ranked. I was like, yes, I'm having fun. And then uh, I was like, this shit is taking over my fucking life. Uninstall. I'm only playing it if, uh, you know, I know someone who's playing it and we're going to play together, I think, in the future. Because this is me, it's all so since addictive. last week when we brought it up. Yeah. yeah this whole fucking epic journey you've been on. Jesus. It's, been, it's been a fucking ride, dude. I fell in love. I realized it was a toxic relationship. I had to distance myself. And now I'm only dipping my toes if my friends are. So, yeah. It's, I, uh, I recognized all those things immediately after I played the, the first two games. And I was like, uh-uh. Mm-mm. I, did, I used to do this as a kid. Like, I would stop playing everything else. I would stop playing WoW. I'd stop playing Magic. I'd find a new Warcraft 3 custom game, and I would just sink my fucking life into it. I'm like, that shit ain't happening when I'm 30. I was like, yeah, no. But you guys I, still, I had to stop oh, myself. Oh, you returned it, Nick. Yeah, I returned it. I'm not even gonna play this shit, dude. <laughs> I can't have it on my account. <laughs> That's funny. So, uh, yeah, I mean, everybody on the DLG likes it. I, likes it a little too much. It's a little heroin. Well, I mean, I haven't played it, but. Yeah. Uh, is it I don't know. You yeah, play? I don't. I don't want to get into something that's gonna suck the soul out of my life either. If, <laughs> if you like, if you like uh, rock paper scissors matches, along with like to be formulaic in a lot of ways, and you also are, you like having different a lot of different like styles of play. This game, this game's for you, um, because it's not too fast. Where you just like, what's going on? If you go through the tutorial and you go through everything else, you'll figure it out. Like. I figured it out after what three rounds, Amelia, and you yeah, were like, "You were drunk too." Nicholas, Nicholas was the worst one. Now he's doing the best, yeah. and I'm like, "Yeah." yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's a great game. You'd, you'd probably like it a lot. Um, Biz, I can't wait to hear what you uh, think of Firewatch. Did you finish it? I didn't finish it, but I did get pretty far in it, and definitely far enough to say, uh, "Fuck teenagers fucking around in a park, <laughs> dude." <laughs> 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 Those damn kids get off of my trails, right? But uh, no, this game is super fun. It's like, it reminds me so much of, um, what is it, the Tales of Edith Finch or something? Yeah. And that kind of storytelling where you're essentially exploring your, like this guy that 
uh, has decided to take a job out in Wyoming, what I'm assuming is like, yeah, Yellowstone, and he's looking for, he's just keeping an eye out for fires and looking and seeing what is like kind of out there. Uh, and Cause you know, there's a lot of exploration as well. And you're kind of up on a tower and you're communicating with this um, like younger woman that is on the little radio the whole time. And she's kind of running away and you're like kind of exploring like what her deal is and things like that are. And this game is just like super fun, but dude, fuck teenagers because half the time <laughs> and like half of this game is just like chasing after these asshole teenagers that are just fucking with shit, or at least the good chunk that I was in. But I really enjoy this because I really miss hiking, um, being out in the winter wonderland right now. And so this is kind of nice because it is almost like, you know, virtual hiking, I guess. Because, yeah, you're going down trails and exploring and helping fix wires and kind of, you know, answering calls like as if you were somewhat of a park ranger. Uh, I can't it's, remember it's what the cool. twist was on this one because this was made by I can't rem I can't remember the developer either, but uh, Campo. this was Camp right. Campo Santo. Okay, yeah. um, I, mean, I think they eventually went or got bought by. They got Valve. acquired by Microsoft. I want to say I think it was Valve. Yeah, oh, Valve. Yeah, a um, lot of lot of information <laughs> that we don't know is true. We're throwing out <laughs> here, but they also made Gone Home, which was a. Yes. a very similar game where it, it seems like it's a horror exploration. Have you played that, Dave? Game. I have. Yeah, I played some of Gone Home, and like I couldn't finish it. I tried so hard to finish it, but it's because like, yeah, I'm scared, dude. Half the time, it's my <laughs> own damn imagination. I like went in the house, and I was like, nope, too scary, dude. There's ghosts around here. I know it, but like, there's probably not. <laughs> but funny. it's yeah. just like, well, I mean, it it's was a two-hour game. It's pretty short. But... I'll I'll break it to you right now. There's there's nothing. Uh, scary in the game. No, well, it that, doesn't that's make the thing. It, that's the thing. The, the game builds matter. it up it's like me, it's a man. horror game, <laughs> and it makes it's you think such that. Such a nice ending. Until you, the yeah. end, you find out. Oh, she's just gay, which I guess to some people is a horror. But um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I guess. I guess. <laughs> <Jeez. it's>, <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. So, just an important note: these two, Fulbright, who made Gone Home, and uh, Campo Santa, who made Firewatch. Um, we're going to say no relation between those two. Just Well, except for this. The lady in the tower is the mom from Gone Home, which is oh, interesting. Shit. Yeah. yeah, and like the guy who did the music. Because they, these guys hmm. used to do a podcast called Idle Thumbs that I listened to. And um, and I, I'm pretty sure the guy who did the music for, for this worked on the other one. But uh, They're probably just really friendly. Yeah, I don't know. It's studios. tough with developers because, yeah, the name's different, but a lot of times uh, the actual people move around and and stuff. But I, I found the games very similar. But what I can't remember is what like the what what was the ending in. Fire I don't want to say because she's playing. It I haven't. Oh, I haven't, haven't finished, finished it. Yet. No? Okay, All I'm right. going. To, uh, so, yeah, isn't this game two hours long? It's not. It's not. Yeah, it's not super long. It's I like just like I, I played quite a good chunk of it, but I didn't get to finish it. No, um, you're right there, probably. Did Bobby just yeah. come in here and like, hey, uh, can we spoil the game for like I know a man, <laughs> right? <laughs> Not just for Amanda, but for a hundred, a bunch of other people. Well, it came out a while, but oh, it did came out. It came out in 2016. Yeah, it's quite a quite a bit old, but it's yeah, very positive reviews, and so yeah. um, I remember liking this when it came out. Yeah, I liked yeah. it a lot. People said Walking Simulator. Who cares if it's a good story and it looks nice? Who cares? What you're exactly. Would you rather go on a virtual a walk or read a book? You choose. Mm, both. You can do um, both with this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I also, well, well, Nick, you talk. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess. Um, so I've been playing God of War Ragnarok. I've been playing it off and on. I try to play it at least like once or twice a week. Um, and it is a great game. We're getting to the point in the game where the game's like, are you sure you want to do this final shit? Essentially. So now we are going ahead and we got to this place called the bowl. And that's as much as I'll talk about it is essentially the last free play area before the main story finishes. And the reason I know that is because someone else said the same exact thing in describing on like, where are you at in the game? And most people are either pre bowl or post bowl. And so we'll be, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do a bunch of the side quest stuff in this one, so I'll probably just do a little bit, maybe like upgrade my favorite weapons as much as I can 
and then just uh, complete the game. But uh, I'm excited to finish it and see what ends up happening and what ends up being the conclusion for this game. Um, I feel like something important is going to happen. I don't know if there's going to be a third one or not, so we'll definitely see. Um, the Okay, so, so if you know where the end of the game is, what's keeping you from finishing it and then doing all the side stuff after? Is there a benefit or, or I, I don't know if there is a free play after. There most likely is because of the amount of side quests in the game. There is a very, very large amount of side shit to do in the game. And it, it all is actually active storytelling that does lend itself to the game, It's like to the story. Um, and I do a lot of the side quests, but I just, to me, it's it's not repetitive, but in the sense, it's like I actually want to see what the rest of the story has to offer, the rest of the main story. So. Gotcha. You yeah. want to flesh out the whole story before you finish it. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. But it's... Uh, um. How does it compare def- to the first one uh, up until this point in the first one? It's always hard to make a, 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 a sequel to a game that has established characters. Like, it's not a character you create yourself, right? Um, so far, I like it better because of the more things that are in the game. The story itself, I would say, is on par than the first one. At this point, it's... Um, it's up to the it's up to the finale, right? It's up to how they how they do everything at the end when it involves uh, when it involves like the characters and everything, and and you know what happens with the story, how how they do things. Um, so I can't give it like a full review without that, obviously. Um, but I think I think my like so far, if you, you know, put a gun to my head, I would say the second one is better. Wow. Um, the story the story is like I said on par with the first one. I think what the first one has over the second one is the huge change for people who are God of War fans. Like when you play the when you play the first three God of Wars or four, if you're weird, um, <laughs> and then you play God of War Ragnarok, you're like, "What the fuck is this? Like, this is a big, big difference. There's a big, huge difference as far as like character development, gameplay, all these other things." And it's like, but it's still the same. It's still like, oh, this is Kratos. He's the, he's cha- he's obviously changed because he's older. Um, and so those two things you have like are kind of balancing each other out. Uh, that's that's what kind of the advantage is on game one. But I think the second one is really good so far. Nick, I can't wait to play it. I I met some of my coworkers in person the other day. We were talking about God of War, and I know nothing about the series. And they were talking about how in God of War three, there's a sex mini game, uh, quick time event. Mm-hmm. Where, <laughs> so the, the tone of the game completely changed. Ba- like even like completely, the, yeah. not, like n- so. Like the, the first games, you were like, "Haha, Medusa boobs!" Wait, wait, wait. Now there's ten Medusas, ten Medusa boobs, or twenty, whatever. It, <laughs> it, like, but and you're like, I'm also ripping God's heads off like every five fucking seconds. Oh my god! Uh, but the thing is, in this one, the the Nordic pantheon is not nearly as expendable as the greek pantheon is there's not like 40 main gods to like chop off their heads and kill and defeat so the 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 way that they do develop characters and side characters is actually really meaningful and i I think it's actually one part of the game that's really uh charming because like in god of war in the first three god of wars you only really heard of characters and kind of interacted with them like oh hades is this giant fat guy covered in spikes in the underworld and he's an asshole He's gonna kill you, uh, and that's about it. That like it wasn't like a ex, like a story. Like how does Hades feel? You know, it was an action game. Exactly. Yeah, it still had a good story. Like it still had a good action game story. You're like, damn, this motherfucker mad. But um, <laughs> in this one, he gets mad too. But he also has Phoenix. He also has and as Phoenix. someone who's a dad now, I have Phoenix too. <laughs> um, but no, uh, just so I'm guys, still loving. Just to wrap this up, like. He got a tattoo of the first game, and he thinks this one's better. Yeah, I can't wait yeah. to play it. I also like Kid Atreus more than uh, Teenager Atreus. You know, well, hormones yeah, are a bitch. but moody teenagers, man. <laughs> we found out in it, Firewatch. They're fucking fuck yeah. teenagers. They're fucking assholes. That's the yeah. title of this episode, man. Fuck teenagers. <laughs> yeah. No, don't title this episode that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> it could be risky. It could be risky. Yeah, yeah uh, no kidding. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> But if you play the first one or you watch the first one, play the second one or watch the second one. Um, 
It's great. I don't think we're going to offend teenagers if we. <laughs> I don't think teenagers listen to podcasts. I don't think teenagers listen. No, I think it was a uh, fucking. Well, never mind. Bobby, the French for a double entendre, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we don't have to I go see. into detail. Yes, They'll yes, definitely yes. overkill it. Bobby's uh, like, what, I wasn't dude. paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Nick was talking. <laughs> <laughs> he just checked he's, out. He's, he's so glazed out, over. Yeah. <laughs> Teenagers won't care. <laughs> yeah, just send him to the kill squad, which, hey, you know, speaking of that, Emilio, how is that game like? So, uh, this is a four player co op um, twin stick shooter. Uh, RP card game not. roguelike. <laughs> no, um, more just it has a lot of progression in it. So um, there's four characters. There, I don't know what the story is. I think maybe they're kind of like criminals and they get contracts to go down and do things on planets. It really doesn't matter. Um, the visuals are kind of all over the place. Some things look kind of like blase, and then other things are like. Wow, that's really intense. Uh, it, it it it's kind of all over the place, and then um, this, I was kind of I was very let down with the audio design. Um, just things don't pop or 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 crackle. There's no snaps. It's just all just kind of like eh. no snap crackle. No, pop. none of those. <laughs> no, it I wasn't said, Rice Krispies. Got it. Yeah, it's just nothing there, dude. It's all just like monotone. Um, but. Uh, I was playing it by myself. I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. And then I started playing with Johnny, and it got so much better because there was more enemies, and it got very, very difficult. Um, we On the second level, we had to try like five, six times for a certain segment. I was like, God damn, like, do we suck? But it, it was a combination of not knowing what we were doing, and um, the progression system is super deep. There is... So much going on. So it's uh, the abilities are MOBA-esque in that like you start the level with only two of your abilities. And as you level up for that level, you get more and more abilities. So like you unlock your uh, ultimate, your, uh, yeah, your ultimate um, every level that you go on. So you don't, you don't have your ultimate at the beginning of any level. And, and that goes for a, a bunch of your abilities. So uh, you, you start with your two core, and then as you're leveling up per level, you you get it all over again, which is interesting. It's actually kind of cool because you, you don't – they can pace the levels a little better. Um, there's a lot going on, a lot of enemies. Um, and they had – the game had enough interesting things going on uh, during the gameplay. Uh, we had, like – a escort mission and then we had a toxic mission where we had to run from bubble to bubble w while we couldn't breathe and that was the one that we kept dying um there is uh straight up just assassinate missions um a lot of level types keeps it fresh um and the like i said it's all for me like half of the game is the progression um you get uh like a new weapon and you get xp for your abilities and you can pick different uh, abilities. You can your loadout. There's just so much stuff. Not to the point where it's overwhelming or it feels like, oh, I'm gonna move this up 15 points, and it doesn't matter. Like you can tell the difference of of your changes. And you're we're tinkering every single round. So like you know, a level might take 15 minutes. For probably five minutes, we're fucking tinkering around with our guys, which is fun. Like, and we're also talking to each other about it. So that's one of the strongest points about it. I would say it, <laughs> when you're not playing the game, it's probably some of the best parts when you're just kind of tinkering away in, in the garage. Um, uh, I don't remember how much this was. I want to say it was about 15 bucks. But if you, uh, um, ooh, no, it was more. Oh, it's not 30. the winner. Yeah. It's not the winter sale, though, that it was when you bought it. I don't know. What was the all time low, Christian? Forty percent off. Yeah, yeah. So about fifteen bucks. Um, so if you have a friend that's gonna play with you, I would recommend it. Um, I would not recommend for remote play. I think there's too much. Even even just playing straight, I hosted and he joined me. He was having a little bit of lag, and there's a lot of Twitch, like you know, 
dodge roll out, out of the way of stuff and yeah. getting hit by stuff. So uh, a good connection. You want a good connection, and you want um, somebody to play with. It's fun. Hmm. All right. Yeah, it looks interesting. Nice. I think uh, another game that is super fun to play with another person, definitely Wasteland 3. Uh, I put that on my highlights because, man, I can't, I can't get enough of this game. And I ain't even going to lie to you guys. I'm excited. Even though I'm super tired and it's almost 11 p.m. and it's been a long day, like I, I just keep thinking I'm hoping that Tag Lord was available after this. That way I can play some more Wasteland 3 because, holy shit, I love this game. This game is great. Like it Not only does it have all of the fantastic elements of a tactile, tactile uh, RPG strategy game that like I love, like Divinity Original Sin, where you're utilizing different things in the environment and like completely creating these chain effects to knock out a whole bunch of different enemies through either CC or like aiming, targeting at a boss. Like it's, I just, I love this game very much. I think it's well written as well. There's genuine, hilarious moments. <laughs> um, and there's some genuine moments that are just like fucking wild. Like right now we're seeing on the screen Liberty, who is one of the daughters of the patriarch. And like in that scene, it was just nuts because one of the things I like too about this game is that they kind of mix some things up. Like you don't actually go into this whole 3D, almost RPG, like Elder Scrolls, whatever level of like interaction with many characters, but that character liberty i was just talking about you do so it's like the entire game is almost top down and you're moving around then all of a sudden you're zooming right up into their face as they're talking which is cool but she's completely like savage walking around with like the heads of spies and she just like throws this huge bag of heads at us and like it this game is just like i said it's written i think incredibly well and it's so much fun just the um just like the way that you can play in so many ways. Like we have a character tag and I, so you each get basically uh, three characters that you control. And so Tag and I made our own characters as the mains, and they've just kind of, like, morphed into what we need them to be. Like, Daze is a sniper and also a mechanic and a little lockpick thief. And so, like, that's where they're at. And then I have a character named Thunder who is all explosives and fire and just, like, absolute grenader and... Tag has his main character, I think, is more of like an archer and uh, does a lot more of like the weapons modding and handles all the modding stuff. And then we've got we've got I think our best character out of the whole party, though, out of six is this dude named Professor Higgs, who I was not expecting to be good mm -hmm. at all because he was just this nerd stuff, toaster loving, fixing dude that just like shot weird shit. And in the beginning, he felt it seems so squishy with him. And now he is like the baddest motherfucker on our team he will like hack a machine or a turret and then instantly turn around and like slash some dude right in the face and one hit ko him and then knock out like three other people with this like crazy like nerd shit bomb he made it's, it's like it's awesome so i love just the like the diversity and the range of like experiences in this game, not only with the characters that you create and the way that they kind of change over time, but also too, just like in the way of the interaction with the game, there's a lot of moments where it's like, you could go to this homestead and save these people, or you could go save this caravan. And like, depending on your choice, like you really do sometimes get fucked over later based on what you picked, which it's just, I always love the kind of games that are like that. But when they full circle like that, and there's all kinds of little nuggets too, from like the previous Wasteland games and the writing here. And it's just, I think it's a really wonderful game that I can't recommend enough for people, especially if you got one friend, you know, you just need one, but you do need one friend consistently, <laughs> almost like three or four hours every day playing this game. And then maybe you'll get to one out of three children that you have to kill. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great review, Dace. Um, I got some questions. Can you play more than two people multiplayer? No, just two people. And then, um, uh, when you when you're both doing the RPG part in like a new town or something, and you're walking around talking to different people, how does it deal with um, like when your character has to make a major decision, like or or, or a party decision, like? Cause, so yeah, yeah, you can you can kind of actually do things separately. So it seems like the real heavy hitting party decisions, you're like all in, you know, like your car. So it's actually kind of like everybody is together and has to do it. If you make decisions to pick up quests or not, though, like in a town, that can be totally separate. And sometimes that has been like really fucking funny as well. Because like, for example, in the Rangers uh, headquarters, 
Tag and I ran around a lot separately and we were just spreading rumors about each other to all the people there. <laughs> That's funny. And so like when I went to the medic, the guy was like, I heard a rumor that you guys were fucking goats without protection. What kind of idiot does that? I'm going to prescribe you some antibiotics right now. It's disgusting. You need to at least <laughs> use protection. And then gave me like a bunch of antibiotics that I didn't even ask for. And it's just because tag started a rumor before. <laughs> you, you say <laughs> embarrassing. I say free antibiotics. Yeah, I was like, cool, all right. I mean, I'm not fucking... Yeah, how do they have a better healthcare system <laughs> this time than they would do now? <laughs> and then... Uh, well, um, like the, a 16th the amount of people. <laughs> th those other uh, characters you were talking about, did you make them or did you conscript them? So it's kind of a mix, which I think is what's really cool. So Tag and I made our own characters first. Yeah. And then uh, we were able to add like an additional character. Okay. And so when we started, we just had two characters that we were in charge of. For me, it was Days, and then I made uh, Thunder, who was the explosive one. But then as you're playing, you actually will accumulate other ones. And uh, Professor Higgs again, dude, the man's a fucking beast. He can talk to animals, and he's been charming animals. So we literally, like, Tag and I roll, like, a 10-man a army deep everywhere we go. Like, and it's just it's awesome because you can yeah you can charm animals to come help and fight with you if you have that ability um there's one moment where you can make a clone of yourself like there's all kinds of moments in the game where they allow you to add people to your thing which reminded me in a sense of like a uh, death row to canada how like randomly you could just get people joined and i do think that if you create somebody like they can show up i don't think they necessarily show up in the same way that like death road to canada would be but there is the opportunity that like they could be there but i mean typically a lot of the characters are already like designed and kind of floating around like lucia is like this um like pistol wielding chick that comes from like a high-end family in one of the first towns that you see and like you can have her and so like these people will join i have this guy that uh joined me and his name's marshall kwan but I, I, the first time I read his name, I read his name as Marshall, Marshall Kwan. So that's what I call him now. <laughs> so he's a huge kiss ass that is phenomenal at using assault rifles. But that was like a normal character in the game. Like he was already in the game. I'm sure the people that have played know who Marshall is or Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a lot of characters that are just there that you can add, but you you're able to customize and or select like from a, basically a pool of what they had as like mercenaries that you could have join you. Mm. That was a damn. You make me want. I know I don't have time to play this. Just like Divinity, like if I had infinite time, obviously I'd be I'd finish Divinity two and then I would pick up Wasteland three. I want to play it, but I can't. I can't. You just. Just do like one of our listeners. I think it was Mike from New Jersey or something. His name was. He, uh, he said that it's like every Saturday he carves out like a little bit of time. Yeah. He just, you and Bobby got to get with it, you know, carve out like an hour, what's hour and a the, week. Uh, what's the price tag on this game? Because it looks like it's on sale for the Lunar right now. Lunar it's sale. half off. And so it is 20 bucks. It is hmm. definitely fucking worth that, in my it was, opinion. It was on Game Pass. I don't know if it fell off of Game Pass. It's absolutely on Game Pass. Yep. Tag Laurel and I are still playing it on Game Pass, but. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I would own this on Steam. So I can at least see how many damn hours I put into this. I feel like I've put in a lot of hours so far. And I'm just scratching the surface, and I'm I'm enjoying it. I can't wait to dig the dive. Like, I'm just going to keep playing a lot more of this. I'm so glad you're loving it. That's awesome. Oh, uh, it's a lot it is fun. pretty cool. Chris, you got a uh, plug for us? We got a fucking plug. Okay. We started after much cajoling and convincing. Uh... A fantasy critic league on the Discord. Look, there's ten people, eight listeners, me and Emilio, uh, Bobby, Nick, and Amanda said, "Fuck that, we don't want to. We don't want to join this stupid ass fantasy league." Uh, that's yeah, a direct verbatim. Quote. That's exactly yeah. what I it's, said. Yeah, I and then I'm just twice. Gonna... <laughs> and then and then we just took it and we just wrote fantasy as a part of our trailer from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Days and Nick say uh, fantastic. Uh, okay, so you can look at this if you want by joining our Discord, dlgaming.net. There were some interesting picks. It's a deep selection because there's 10 of us and we each have to draft 10 games by the end of the season. Um, and I don't know. I think we need everyone's help. Like, what what is the winner, what does the winner of this league get? Uh, I don't think we want to give you money, but maybe you could come on the podcast and talk about your picks and, and, and something like that. I don't know. What do, what do you guys think? What should a winner of this league get? 
one minute to say whatever you want. That could get dangerous. Um, yeah, it could. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, there might be some. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. Especially this person's Eat Less Beef's publisher name is Unrequited Butt Stuff. <laughs> Maybe we give them uh, whatever our highest level of patron is. Uh, access to that for a month or two or something. Okay. Yeah, I like that idea. Bobby, what do you think? Um, I don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I, uh, Coffee or Wasteland 3. I, I don't know. <laughs> wow. They, they probably already the have that. They, they probably already have that. Okay. Um, Nick? Plus, it's on Game Pass. I would probably say a Steam gift card because it's not money, money. But it's something that you can still like give the DLG bump to whatever you review. I don't know. Fuck. Okay, Amanda, what do you think these people should get, or the winner should get? They should get a DLG shield tattooed on their butt. <laughs> oh, that's the best idea. Okay, you heard it here first, folks. You have to pay for it, but uh, you'll get the DLG <laughs> tattooed <laughs> on your butt if you win. You can get our trademark. <laughs> <laughs> or if you if you have any real suggestions that you would want to see of maybe like winning, we do have a feedback channel on Discord. So I feel like that might be a decent spot to put that in there. What what kind of things you'd like to win? We'll figure this out. Join the Discord. It's a good place. All right. Well, it is time for listener questions, and we've got a few here. The first one is coming from Zap, and he asks us if we agree or disagree with this statement. So this was a, uh, looks like some meme that was posted somewhere that says, there are only three types of indie games. One, Metroidvania Souls-like. Two, open world survival crafting. And three, metaphor for depression. Nah. There's puzzle games. Um, Those are usually metaphors for depression. <laughs> yeah. So I was thinking about this a lot because as soon as I read this, I was like, well, what the, What about shooters? What about Call of Duty? And then I started thinking about it and I was like, fuck, is Call of Duty a metaphor for depression? <laughs> because you're just sitting there grinding all the time while this chatter and everybody shit talks you and yeah, you just grind and, metaf- like metaphor. for nothing. It's just depressing. Yeah, it's just depressing. Straight <laughs> it's up. depressing. It's, it's depressing. not an indie game either. It's <laughs> not an indie game, though. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can have an, a shooter indie game, though. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, sure. but you're right. Yeah, like it's still. I was thinking there would be shooters, but I, the, yeah, a lot of times they're a metaphor to, for depression too. Yeah. I, I would say probably over eighty percent of indie games fall into those three categories. <laughs> yeah, I would be. I would, I would be agree. inclined to agree. There you go. You All broke right. it. So eighty percent agree. <laughs> broke the code, man. <laughs> All right. Next question from Hingle McCringleberry, and he asks. What game has benefited from a solid marketing or advertising campaign and a cool side product? For example, the new cola they sold at Target along with Fallout 4. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is, of course, Binding of Isaac. Um, wh- uh, when they had one of their updates, they did a geocache um, kind of like side quest. Scavenger thing. hunt. Yeah, scavenger yeah. hunt. People had to go out and go to certain areas and look for literally dig a thing up i think it was and then that thing had a clue and then and as far as the product you can buy uh well you can buy plushies of anything but that one in particular you can you can buy the thing that they that person found i think it was uh wasn't it the skeleton bobby or nick what yeah it was the lost i think the lost yeah Mm -hmm. that's how they uh, that was just for like an announcement and the inclusion of one character to the game and a lot of the story elements came out on that one, too. I think that was the whole... I thought some dad stuff was going to start coming in. Nick, where's all the dad stuff? The dad stuff is in the Bumbo game. Oh, I played the Bumbo it's game. All, it's, it's all in the Bumbo game. It, it essentially explains that his dad taught him how to, how to use his imagination to entertain himself while abuse was going on. Oof. So yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's not a happy game. <laughs> It's a metaphor for depression. Yeah, it all is. Uh, I don't know. The first one that came to mind for me, again, in a sense, was Fallout 4, just because I... uh, Was it Fallout 4? No, I think it was... uh, There was the collector's edition where you got an actual Pip-Boy. 
and like it worked with the app and then it synced within the game, which I thought was just like the coolest shit. And I know that it has n- not really anything to do with like a cool side that. product that you could go to Target. But I just thought it was one of the coolest things that you could get with the game. And especially for the fact that like while you were playing, you could access your inventory and select things and use it off of the actual Pipple pip boy that was on your hand because it was an app on your phone and you basically put your phone in the pip boy but Still. i just thought the whole thing was just super sick and like a great way of selling the collector's editions of that because it was just like when are you gonna get shit that's functional and cool and you know nerdy like that right great answer um i got you some nu- nuka cola caps didn't i and uh nuka cola loved it yeah. yeah cool still have them well my, fall- my so, right? fucking <laughs> fallout campaign right now is is in the Fallout universe, and it's such a fun universe, man. It's so awesome to just, yeah, that that Pit Boy thing. I actually used it, and then I realized that opening your inventory and then accessing it was way faster than using a touchscreen phone. Because the way the Pit Boy worked is you had to put your phone in the Pit Boy, and it would sync up the app to the game. But like I said, actually like choosing weapons and stuff was way easier with like R one and L two. <laughs> It's definitely a cool a cool thing that came out with the game. Hmm. Were, you, were you playing that on a controller or on PlayStation? Yeah, I was playing on PlayStation. Oh, okay. It it dude, it was fucking instant on PC. Like it was way quicker to use huh. it on PC than the way you're talking. Yeah, like yeah, I was like, it's oh my case. god, I can use a stim pack like right when I'm dying. It's awesome. <laughs> It's a, it's almost as good as what the Skyrim one was. It like you could yell into your microphone if you had the connect, and so you could be like Fusro da, and it would do the thing. <laughs> yeah, it was a good thing. <laughs> Bethesda knows how to make third party shit storms, and that they're fun shit storms. I love them. Bobby's like, I'm not a consumerist. I just I don't play a lot of Bethesda games apparently, so I don't yeah. I don't have a very good answer for this. It, usually, a game's really successful, then the merch comes out, but. I guess if there's a sequel or an already popular game and uh, or IP and then they're making a new game, they can promote it in various ways. I don't know. Maybe Valve should do something like this, like a Willy Wonka golden ticket type thing if they mm. ever come out with another game where you can win a, a tour of the Valve facility. That'd be sick, dude. Yeah. Um, it's in head crab plushies. That's, that's what they probably have somebody it in. who's been to Blizzard, the shit's fucking sick. Like they have a little museum at the in the front lobby. They have gigantic statues. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. All right. Chad just fucking works there. He just walks past this shit every day. Like fucking load this fucking thing again. <laughs> uh, I look at this every goddamn day. Follow up question from Hinkle McCrinkleberry. Uh, do you like pineapple on your pizza? Sometimes. No. It's one of my favorite toppings, actually. <laughs> Typical. Uh, no, that's <laughs> why. Hold your mouth like a claw. I'm sure you fucking grab your. Wait till the next next to the, wait next the next political <laughs> ad. Now we got more ammo. That's right. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I don't. I, I don't understand like the hate. I, I'm kind of like <clears throat> it, it. It sucks because pizza is something that you order as a group, so it's like nobody ever wants to get pineapple on the pizza. Um, that rarely happens for me, but. Uh, I do like weird stuff like black licorice. That's like a very divisive candy. Yeah. And I love black oh, licorice. Oh, on your pizza? I was like, oh, fuck. Uh, oh, no. Although, you that know, you like not having friends anymore. <laughs> no, not on the pizza. I did try anchovies one time and God, it was so bad. I was so mad because I was just like, yeah, I'll, I've never tried it. Let's try it. I had one bite and I'm like, I can't eat the rest of this pizza. The whole fucking thing's ruined. <laughs> well, ordering anchovies on a pizza was actually the code to order a prostitute in my hometown. Like, it's not just like a urban legend. Like in high school, we were like, ha ha ha. And then I worked at uh, Domino's pizza. It was one of my first jobs. And the guy who worked there was the son of the guy who, who owned the prostitution ring. And uh, I was like, is that thing true? He's like, I don't know. Let's pick up the phone and find out. And so I called his dad's pizza place and it, they just transferred me. They were like, what do you want? Like, what kind of girl do you, I was like, whoa, because nobody ordered anchovies, they're just like I, we can wow. use that as code. Because <laughs> there will never. May, be you know what probably was? They probably didn't even have it listed on the menu. You yeah. had to be like, yeah, let me get some anchovies. You know, yeah. I'm feeling kind of lonely tonight. Blows my mind. Also, pineapple belongs on pizza. Pineapple, chicken, and banana peppers. 
That is the best pizza. If you that watch exists. the really old Ninja Turtles together? cartoon, Fucking... they always got really weird toppings on their pizza, like ice cream and stuff. And I always thought that Which would cartoon? be cool. The the Ninja Turtles cartoon. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Uh, so, uh, Chris, every time you heard uh, somebody order the uh, anchovies on a pizza, that you knew you had some work to do that night. No, that was a stretch. <laughs> I was trying to say you were a prostitute. All right, moving on. I wish, man, I could have made some. I could have been making some money, but yeah. no, not me. I don't think they make that much. Really? Oh, it depends on the prostitute, man. Um, I mean, if you're a pro- if you're a call girl, then it's like okay, you probably make some money. If you're a prostitute, then I feel like somebody else is making the money. I, I feel, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I hope. Hopefully, they like unionize and we can legalize and get those people the money they deserve. There you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, next question from Warconius: Are there any Game Pass games that you randomly gave a shot and were pleasantly surprised? I recently discovered. Tinykin and Midnight Express. Uh, yeah, there's been there's been a few times I can't think of any right. Wait, now. What about that one that was the shooter with robot Robo Quest? Yeah, Robo Quest. That was a yeah. good one. That was that a good, was good find. One. I don't know if that if you found out about that through Game Pass. I have one installed right now that I haven't tried, but somebody recommended it to me. Solasta, so Solansta, something like that. It's Solasta. A, yeah, it's a. Um, RPG, hardcore RPG, um, kind of like, um, like Divinity, Divinity, right? But it's single, mm-hmm. single player. Yeah. So I have that installed right now, but I just haven't touched it yet. But um, yeah, I, I want to play some fucking hardcore RPG, especially if it's if it's single player. It's more chance that I'm gonna actually play it. I just yeah, because then you have to coordinate time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looks great, and. Um, and it's not Divinity, which is almost a plus because just like Bobby, I've been through that fucking first town so many goddamn times. Yeah. Fort Joy. Yep. <laughs> yep. There's a mod, by the way, just to skip Fort Joy. That's all the mod does. It just skips Fort Joy. <laughs> but how do you level your character up? Uh, just... What it does is it gives you, it, it asks you like what you would choose in that situation. It's like if you were encountered with a hobo with a knife, what would you do? And then you just click the button. You just answer a bunch of questions or there's like the super nerd version where you're like, I've done this so many times. I know what level I'm supposed to be and what ability I'm supposed to have. What I'm supposed to heal. So I got it all now. That's about it. Uh, well, that nice. is the last of our listener questions. There. Got, What's everybody playing oh, next week? I got a little story I want to tell. Oh, okay. uh, I was watching Celebrity Jeopardy last night. Sam loves it because, you know, the questions are easy, easier. <laughs> and, uh, BJ Novak was on there, and uh, c- like a couple other people, uh, like some more no name people, and uh, <laughs> the the other person that wasn't BJ got a question about the shoes that he was wearing that episode, uh, and so of course he knew the answer. It was like Zappos. He's like, "Oh, I got Zappos on. Oh, I ordered these on Zappos or whatever." And then there was something about high heels with red uh, shoes with high. The, where the high heel part is red, it's a specific uh, company, and the girl was wearing those. So like each person got a free one for just what they were wearing on the feet. So then BJ PJ Novak starts pretending, or not pretending, he's like saying that it's all a conspiracy. This whole episode's a conspiracy because it's all tied together. And he wasn't doing very well on the game either. So on the final Jeopardy, he answered. <laughs> What is going on here? <laughs> like, like, uh, what's this fucking conspiracy? We could not fucking stop laughing. Also, the Louis Vuitton conspiracy. Yeah, uh, Sam took a gummy, so she was high as fuck towards the end. And uh, one of the categories, it said double N, like in quotations, but she thought it meant that the word started with double N. She goes, "What the fuck? I'm fucked on this one." And I'm like, "No." <laughs> She, she goes, she goes, she goes, uh, oh, containing, oh, oh, like her, all her anxiety went along. Cause it's like containing. she's actually on the show herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny, man. Anyway, nice. uh, Celebrity Jeopardy, it's right at my level. I, I look, I seem like a genius when I watch that. Patton Oswald, goddamn, he could be on regular fucking. Uh, yeah, he's a very intelligent person. Yeah, dude. He just fucking, it was he had like fifty-seven thousand dollars, and everybody had negative. The other people had negative money. Damn. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. Hmm. Uh, yeah. What are we playing next week? Fuck. 
I still want to play more Midnight Suns. I'm going to be playing War. Wasteland 3. Yeah. Okay. God of War and Tarkov. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see what's free on Epic. <laughs> That's where I discover games. Um, I, I'm really interested in Wasteland 3, but I just don't know. Uh, now's not the time for that, but that's uh, that's going to go on the wish list. I'm going to keep an eye on that one. Oh, it's on Game Pass. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that it's is good. on Game Pass. Yeah. Game Pass, okay. Yeah. Who, who's, Game Pass and free. Whose uh, timing lines up with yours? A bit? I feel like you and Sniper can knock out some hours on something, no? Maybe. It, it's tough. And unfortunately, this week is going to be very busy for me. The whole end of this month is just, like, totally shot. But Friday nights are typically what's best for me that's when i get the most game time in like the most concurrent hours in mm-hmm. um but i will actually be working this friday night so that's not gonna happen this week <laughs> Whew, i'm getting uh excited for this uh outro here no oh boy okay <laughs> <laughs> amanda what are you playing next week oh yeah i said i was gonna play some uh, wasteland three. Oh, yeah. wasteland three hell yeah uh, but you, yeah. Chris, you know, what are you going to play? R- realize that you're addicted and then stop this week. No, I got a, I've been getting into Battletech. I'm not addicted. It's so story heavy. Um, I picked it up so long ago when Mini suggested it and I played it an hour. And I was like, eh, this isn't for me. And then you ever like come back to a game? And you're like, how did I not yeah. play the shit out of this? Like, this is right. This is so fucking fun and awesome. Uh, anyways, I was stupid back then, and now I'm smart. That's that's what I'm gonna say. It's like so. The Witcher Three, dude. I, I was like The Witcher Three. I was like, I, I can't get into it. Can't get it. It took me fucking my fourth time, my fourth time trying. I was like, how many people are gonna give this game of the year? Okay, let me. And then now it's my favorite game of all time. It's nice. crazy. Yeah. Uh, did you Just play it, Nick? By the way, what'd you say? Have you played it? Played what? The Witcher Three. Yeah, it's an amazing game. Oh, did you finish it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, all right. It's, it's it's one of the best games of all time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me like to go? No, I just didn't know because you never bring it up, so I didn't know if you had played it. No, I love that game. Now uh, let's roll that beautiful bean footage. I'm gonna try to thank all of the patrons while they're <laughs> doing this. Ad. There's no way. Okay. I can't even speak normally. You can do it. All right. You can do it. Have faith. You just Ready? Have to commit. Oh, I'm going to hit the button. Yeah, I guess okay. so. Thank you to Less Ride Bikes, Anil Sprung, Remotely the Here, BMN, Bluntnadists, uh, Jake, Sengoya, Brennan, Archibald, Tattoo Terror, Gabriel Grieve, Jamie Brack- Brackham, uh, Bed, yeah, Bed, mm, Hingle McCringleberry. If you guys had normal words in here, it would help a lot. Oh, am I going to keep going? Okay. Uh, Hector, yeah. Zap, Adrian, Peter, Hassan. Oh, this is so much better. Uh, Scram TX, uh, Tom, JP Diddy, Hogglefosh, Carl, Sunken for Life, Ben, Patrick, uh, Dustin Simmons, uh, Longfellow 110, uh, Warconius, Raging Cajun, Caddy B, Mikhail, uh, Rosrowski, um, recycled Tagloro high performance group. Uh, th- that's a whole group of people. Uh, r- uh, and rubber nuts. Thank you. All right. And if you Thank become you, a patron, everybody. he will mispronounce your name on air too. <laughs> All right. Later, folks. Bye. Bye.